We visited with Mindy Granley, Sustainability Coordinator at the University of Minnesota Duluth, to talk about the various types of pervious pavement they've installed over the past five years, including concrete pavers, recycled rubber pavers, and pervious concrete. We asked Mindy about cost and maintenance issues, what they've learned from these projects, and whether they have been satisfied, and would recommend these practices to others. Well, here on campus, we, try, we strive to be a good example and be a good steward of our campus. And so with a lot of impervious surface from our buildings and our sidewalks and our streets, um, anytime we can find a way to reduce that impervious surface, we'll, we'll try something new. Cost wasn't as much of a factor here because we did want to test some things. So we started with some small sites. So just having that small test area will keep the price down. Um, but when you're kind of the first person that tries something out, sometimes it is a, a higher expense. One of the concerns that the uh, folks in our grounds department had about using pervious pavers was how do we maintain these practices in the winter months? But we never changed the plate that we used. We never changed the equipment that we used. And um, after two years, the pavers had held up with no problems whatsoever. So as far as snow removal goes, we haven't had any concerns. There is a concern about the pore spaces getting clogged in between the pavers or um, within the spaces of the porous concrete. So we'll use power washers um, to keep the spaces clean and we'll use like a leaf blower to blow plant material out of the spaces. And then at times, our pervious pavers, we'd had to re-chip the little chips in between the big pavers in order to, um, to keep them stable. They will settle over time, so re-chipping has been a maintenance concern. The pavers have performed exactly like we expected, exactly as designed. Um, they were put in very carefully because we wanted to do a test pilot and make sure um, that the utmost care was gone in to make sure that they were properly installed um, and then making sure that they're properly maintained. And by doing those two things, we've had no problems with the performance of our pavers, our porous pavers or our porous concrete. We, have, um, we did have some people that favored the composite recycled rubber pavers over the concrete pavers that we use just because the concrete pavers can look a little scuffed or old and these new recycled content pavers they they look new all the time so we've had some preferences for people aesthetically they like the look of a certain paver over others but as far as performance they've all performed just fine the one problem we've had here with the porous concrete is that um, we've seen some sloughing off of the top layer of rock and so we'll lose a little bit of rock each year after the winter months. Some of our engineers think that there's been some puddling and that freeze thaw has cracked the top layer. Um, but it hasn't affected the performance of the porous concrete. It's just been kind of a nuisance to lose some of this top rock and have it floating around. Um, with the porous pavers, we did have some clogging in our concrete pavers um, of fine material. And um, without a vacuum sweeper, we haven't had a way to solve that problem yet. But all of our other pavers are holding up just fine. Uh, there was concern about whether the composite pavers would hold up to large truck traffic. So one of the test areas that we, we put the pavers in was at our loading dock at the heating plant. So there were large vehicles going in and out of there all the time. Uh, but we had no problems with cracking or breaking or losing bricks. So that's been fine. Be really careful about what you specify when you're working with a contractor to make sure you're getting the correct materials. It's okay to start small and see if these things work and test them before we apply them more broadly. I think I'd recommend that people uh, consider porous pavers and porous concrete, especially the pavers because they aren't as expensive as the porous concrete. Uh, we've seen that the pavers perform, they look nice and we haven't had any problems, so I would definitely recommend using this type of technology. If these practices aren't working in certain places, oftentimes it's because either they weren't installed correctly or they weren't maintained correctly. So you can't overemphasize enough that um, being careful and making sure you follow the guidelines for installing the materials and maintaining your best practices. For more information about stormwater, water quality, and the practices described in this video, visit lakesuperiorstreams.org. We thank Minnesota's Lake Superior Coastal Program and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration for supporting this project.